Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with some exciting news. The RF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Hi everybody, Dan Oman, Mike Beer, the DRF race of the day for Thursday, May the 12th, race number seven at beautiful Belmont Park, going three quarters of a mile on the inner turf. It's a second level allowance with a 62,500 claiming option. Before we get to the analysis, there's an opportunity from DRF Bets to make some money before the Preakness Stakes. It's the Bonus Bucks Series. Get up to $100 cash for the Preakness, and here's how you do it. Use the DRF Bets iPhone or Android app to bet $10 or more to win on any one horse in the race of the days between May the 8th and May the 17th. Even if your horse doesn't win, but comes in second or third, you'll earn a $10 bonus. It's the DRF Bets Bonus Bucks Series. Now let's take a look at the field for Thursday's race of the day at Belmont Park. And if you're on your computer, scan the QR code at the bottom of the screen to access race of the days on your mobile device. And you can view free formulator past performances for this race on the race of the day event page at drf.com. Take a peek, handicap along with us. When it's time to bet the card, use DRF bets with free formulator past performances. Evenly matched group in here, Mike, for this turf sprint. Maxwell Esquire, two to one on the morning line. Seasonal debut for Christophe Clement goes from stakes to tag. Yeah, they're going to offer him up for the price. He's already won this non-winner two condition. That was off the layoff um, at Belmont last year. Dan, we'll see if he can um, do the same thing now as a five-year-old. They do offer him up for the price in here. Um, we'll see if he's ready off the layoff again. His good race makes him very tough in here. He is a closer, and there's not a lot of speed in here. Perfect segue into our Time Form U.S. Pace Projector. Time Form U.S. concurs with your pace analysis. It is a blue bar scenario favoring horses on or near the early lead, and the newly blinkered number two Artemis City Limits might find himself on the lead, and maybe that will help because Artemis City Limits has lacked a killer instinct recently. Uh, yeah, it keeps coming up short uh, recently. He did win two sprints um, over this Belmont turf course going this distance uh, early last year, Dan, after that, I mean, he was right in the mix several times, just kept coming up a little short. A horse that does seem to have some tactical speed is the number one Fauci, who will be making his first start since about Halloween or so. Now, we're going to take a look at Fauci's most recent race going seven-eighths of a mile at Belmont. That was the Oyster Bay, and he ended up finishing in a dead heat for third. There wasn't a lot of pace in this race either. Fauci makes a three-wide sweep, and I didn't think he really cared for the give and the turf. The turf course was listed good. I think it was a little bit worse. He's going to flop to his left lead, but to his credit he will try hard to wind up in a tie for third yeah he forges on pretty good he did get an overall good trip here dan he just can't quite reach the horse on the lead that's maxwell esquire who's right to his outside he was coming widest from last and they're going to hit it together and share third in the race um i thought fauci ran okay in there that was also seven dan i don't that doesn't have to be his favorite distance either that's a totally different ball game than these six uh the five and a half that he's really good at and the six for long races um, I don't know. I think this horse is a little underrated. It could easily win this race. I like him turning back in distance as well. I think he could probably work out a trip from close to the pace while saving ground. I think he'll appreciate a firm turf course. The runner up from the race we just saw came back to run second in a stake in New York with a 94 buyer. Artemis City Limits is the number two. And we talked about perhaps lacking the will to win, maybe never more so than last time at Keeneland. This is his first start off of a short layoff for trainer Michael Maker, and he looms boldly outside. He's had a nice pace tracking trip, and Mikey's bigger than his horse. It looks like he could eat him whole if he wanted to. He just won't go by him. Can't get by this horse, and he's going to wait until very late then. He's always, you know, looks like he's going to be held off from this point, like he's just not going to go by. And then right as they approach the wire, he's going to surge one more time and miss a head bob. Um, really no excuse for him in this race. His prior two turf races, both in New York, at the end of last year, Dan had clear stretch leads both times, coughed them up both times. Those were good horses that ran them down, but 
still, it's hard to keep making excuses for this horse who can clearly win this race, especially if he gets loose on the lead. Up from Oaklawn Park and moving from dirt to turf is the number three nuclear option, making his first start for high percentage trainer Jamie Ness. 10 to 1 on the morning line. Ruben Silvera takes the mount. This is a horse that's been rock solid throughout his career. He has won on dirt. He has won on synth. He has won on turf. The last time we saw him on turf was at Arlington Park last summer. He ran okay that day, finishing ahead of a horse that would come back to win on dirt with a 92 buyer. Something tells me this is a class hike, though. Yeah, I think it is, too. I just feel like it's, it might wind up being a little too tough for him. We'll see if uh, Jamie Ness can get this horse back to one of his really good races. I mean, one of his really good races um, is going to give him a, a real shot in this race. Dan. And he's not a slow horse early, so maybe he falls into the right trip as well. Um, there are things to you know like about him at what should be a very fair price in here, but I couldn't talk myself into him. I wanted to make a case for the number four, Kuchina, who is going out for Michael Maker and was actually reclaimed by Maker a few starts back. Hendrik Karmusha has the mount at five to one. And in his first start off the reclaim, he kind of got into a little bit of trouble, I thought. He was steadied entering the far turn. The horse that won the race, won on the lead. I'm willing to give Kuchina an excuse. His race at Aqueduct, his subsequent effort, I thought it was inoffensive, but I didn't think he had an excuse. Uh, I'm not interested in the Sunshine Turf race. Maybe five-eighths last time was a bit sharp for him. Yeah, that, that could be true, too. Um, yeah, I'm with you on the, the Aqueduct race last December, Dan. Um, I really liked him that day. I remember betting him, and I remember when that field came into the stretch and he was making a move, I thought, yeah, he's got a real shot at this. He's going to be tough in this race. Um, and he just wasn't good enough. He never really got close to Artemis City Limits, who was in front of him. And Scuttlebuzz, who's, you know, a very, very good horse and in great form, just came and charged over the top of both of them. Um, I don't know. I, I think he can win here. I'm a fan of his. I still haven't forgiven him for that December race. And curious to see what sort of trip he can work out in here, because I'm not sure whether he has the tactical speed of some of the others. He might be coming from the back of the pack. Yeah. Maxwell X Squire is the five. Maybe he'll be compromised by the lack of pace. Running in stakes races in his last three starts, he raced without the benefit of Lasix. Now he'll get Lasix here, and the last time he ran with the medication was the 4th of July over this course and distance, and he ran a respectable 92 buyer speed figure in a race where they ran slow the opening quarter, and maybe that hurt him a bit. Yeah, he had no chance in that race. Faya, who was, you know, in raging form at that time, got loose. This horse had no chance. He actually, to me, did well to be third in there. His start right before that, which was going seven, um, he just got blocked in traffic all through the stretch. It was hard to say, you know, what he was going to do late in there, damn it. He never got a, a clear shot at it. Um, and the race prior to that was off of a similar layoff to this one, going six furlongs at Belmont. He even had big trouble in that race. Um, and once he got clear, he charged right over the top of that field. His good race makes him really tough in here. He could be pace compromised. The seven big engines that are main track only. So we'll talk about the six duress making his first start of the year for trainer Tommy Albertrani. Trevor McCarthy takes the mount at six to one on the line. This horse tried seven eighths of a mile last time out. He's been stuck at this class level for a while, Mike. And I'm trying to figure out what his best running style and distance is because they've tried a variety of different things with him. Uh, I think they could use his speed from this outside post to get a good position. And I do like him at six better than seven. I do too. Um, yeah, he's he's an interesting horse in this race because he does have um, several races that would give him a real shot in here, and he might be closer to the pace than some of the you know much shorter prices than him in here. So there there are ways to look at him and feel like he's a real contender in here. Dan, he doesn't win very often. That bothers me about him, but he's not bad. And he does seem to run well fresh, and he should offer good value on the tote. Before we get to our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel for access of all DRF TV's latest video offerings. Let's take a look at our top selections. We look at this race exactly the same way. 5214 Maxwell Esquire may be compromised a bit by the pace. I just like this horse's kick, and I wonder if this is just going to be a bunched-up field, Mike, turning into the stretch, three, four lengths covering them all. I think Maxwell Esquire can overcome. Yeah, me too, especially if he gets a clean trip. And clean trips have been hard for him to come by. When he gets them, he really does finish strongly. 5214 for both of us in the Thursday race of the day at beautiful Belmont Park. Best of luck.